France has joined the U.S. in threatening airstrikes against the Syrian government in the event of a chemical weapons incident. RT correspondent Dan Cohen has the latest. Speaking to reporters Wednesday, U.S. President Donald Trump spoke on the situation in Idlib province in northern Syria. I think it's a very sad situation in Idlib and the province, what's going on there. It's being surrounded and they feel they have 35,000 of their enemy there and yet you have three million people living there. Trump's reference to the militants in Idlib, the majority of which are Al-Qaeda, the internationally recognized terrorist group, as their enemy, comes after Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov accused the United States of having a hidden desire to protect Al-Qaeda. This, says U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, said any chemical attack would be blamed on the Syrian government. We're not going to fall for it. If there are chemical weapons that are used, we know exactly who's going to use them. Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis said Wednesday that the al-Qaeda-dominated opposition has no capability to use chemical weapons. However, in July, the Russian Defense Ministry warned that militants in Syria were preparing a false flag chemical incident and that Russia had handed over the evidence to the U.S., U.N., and Organization for Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. Meanwhile, France's top military official joined the United States in threatening a strike against the Syrian government. In April, the U.S., U.K., and France launched more than 100 missiles at government installations after an alleged chemical attack, though they had no proof it actually happened, let alone Syrian government responsibility. With all eyes on Idlib, the Trump administration is signaling it may consider complying with Israel's declared sovereignty over the occupied Syrian Golan Heights. U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman told Israel Today, the newspaper funded by Trump donor Sheldon Adelson, quote, I can't imagine a circumstance where the Golan Heights will be returned to Syria. I cannot imagine, frankly, a circumstance where the Golan Heights is not a part of Israel forever. Reporting in Washington, Dan Cohen, RT. For more, we go to Dan Kavalik, professor of international human rights at the University of Pittsburgh and author of The Plot to Scapegoat Russia. Thanks for joining us, Dan. Thank you. Dan, what do you make of U.S., France, and other NATO members threatening military attacks on Syria if chemical weapons are used? This is especially considering the groups whom President Assad has been fighting like ISIS and al-Qaeda, are known to have stockpiles of these such weapons. Well, clearly, uh, I mean, it has all the earmarkings of a setup, right, which the Russians have warned the international community of the possibility that there would be some sort of false flag operation that would try to uh, blame uh, the Russians and or Assad for using chemical weapons uh, and then uh, you know, that would justify U.S. attack. And clearly that's what looks like it's going to happen. Every time the U.S. says, hey, if you use chemical weapons, we're going to attack, somehow there's, you know, an allegation of a chemical attack and there's, uh, you know, uh, then the U.S. responds. So uh, clearly to me it looks like a setup. I mean, the U.S. and Israel see that they're losing the war in Syria, meaning that Syria is about to become, you know, a stable, unified country. And they want to stop that. Well, Dan, it's interesting, once again, you bring up the timing, but there's something else going on is the upcoming trilateral summit in Tehran, where Syria will be the focus. What outcomes do you think we can expect as Russia, Iran, and Turkey discuss securing territorial integrity in Syria, preventing human rights violations and developments in Idlib, especially, you know, considering Turkey's interests are sometimes in conflict with the Syrian's government, Syrian government? Yeah, well, that is for certain. Uh, but I, I, I'm actually optimistic that those countries are going to come to some resolution. I think Turkey's finally decided it wants a stable border um, with Syria. And I, I do think those three countries are going to find a way uh, to try to stabilize Syria. And again, I think that uh, the U.S. and Israel do not like the fact that Syria uh, will be a stable country very soon. Um, the goal hit all along has been to destabilize Syria, uh, to allow the U.S. to occupy a third of Syria, and uh, that's going to become very difficult in, in uh, pretty short order, and I think the, the U.S. is trying to prevent that. 
Well, it's interesting because you have the new U.S. sanctions against Russia are also on the table for discussion, um, as well as increased economic cooperation. The three countries already agree on ridding Idlib of terrorist groups, but do you think they might find more to agree on given the increasing U.S. hostility towards all three countries? Well, I definitely do. I think that the U.S. is actually isolating itself uh, by sanctioning uh, so many different countries by threatening so many different countries and I think the world community uh, in large measure is deciding that it needs to move forward without the United States and so yeah I, I think that uh, this will allow Turkey, Iran and Russia to find a uh, common cause um, on Syria and other issues as well. Well thank you Dan for joining us and best wishes on your book as you continue to sell the plot to scapegoat Russia. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.